My name is Robert Muir Wood. I'm the head of research, the chief research officer for a risk modeling company called Risk Management Solutions, which has about a thousand people who work in risk modeling worldwide. I'm, I'm here today because uh, I'm very interested and intrigued by the opportunity to expand catastrophe models, which were first developed for the insurance industry at the end of the 1980s, to expand them for, for the use of, of disaster risk reduction. Now the reason that catastrophe models were first developed was because catastrophe insurers found they couldn't simply rely on historical information to tell them about the risk of catastrophic loss. If we looked at, for example, the country Haiti, if you, if you went all the way back to 1900, there were less than 10 people killed in earthquakes in Haiti up to 2010. And then in a single afternoon, more than 200,000 people were killed. So we can't simply use actual disaster statistics. We can't use the number of people who are killed in disasters or the amount of economic loss in disasters. We can't use that data to tell us whether our disaster risk management procedures are, are working or not. Uh, and there's, it, it, as we come up to the renewal of the Hyogo Protocol, for example, in the HFA2 process, you cannot simply use what actually happens in a five or ten year period to tell you how well you're doing. You're going to have to model it in exactly the same way that insurers found they had to use catastrophe models with synthetic catalogues of ten or even a hundred thousand years of potential catastrophes. You have to use this same approach for actually managing and modeling your risk today. And that is something which is quite an innovation of what people, how they typically think about how you actually measure and manage catastrophic risk. If you can't measure something, you can't actually manage it. If you can't measure how well you're doing in catastrophes, you can't tell whether you're being successful or not. Thank you.